Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you this Hubble 70 watt high pressure sodium wall pack. Now this is one of the bigger versions that use mogul based bulbs. Of course there's also a smaller version as well and I have those too. But like I said this is the bigger version for wattages up to 150 watt high pressure sodium. After that then you need to go to the glass refractor version to withstand the heat of the bulbs. So, like I said, this is a 70 watt version. I also have two 150 watt high pressure sodium versions as well. And um, I can't remember if, if I have two of the 150 watt versions or two of the 70 watt versions. I think I have two of the 150 watt versions and this is the 70 watt version. So anyway, as you can tell, the whole outer housing, except for this back piece here, is plastic. It's just one big molded piece of plastic, and as you can tell, this one's been quite used as the refractor is quite yellowed. There's also a, part, a place for a photo cell, but this one does not have one. This is also an older version. Um, I think I also have a newer version in the 150 watt version. That's why I kept two of the 150 watt versions. I used to have a whole bunch of these as well, but I recycled a lot of them, kept the ballast for future projects, and like I said, I kept one of the 70 watt versions, and one 150 watt version, and a newer 150 watt version. The only difference between the two 150 watt versions is that is the insides. The insides are what's different. The outsides are the exact same. So anyway, we're talking about this fixture here. As you can see, we have the Hubble logo right there. And up top is where you'd have your screws, but I already took those out so that we can open it up. So you just swing it open. Pretty simple. Like I said, a plastic door. You have your hinges here, and all you have to do is slide it right off. So we'll take the whole assembly right off. So here we can see the bulb itself. It's at an angle, which is pretty neat to help throw the light down instead of directly out. You see some information. Here. Now the older versions use these white covers and the newer versions use a, a thinner metal cover that isn't painted. So we can also see the grounding wire coming in here. We have a very nice waterproof uh, fixture here. Uh, usually it, it originally was connected through the back but I put this on the side so that we can plug it in and take a look at it. Inside I put a older Phillips Alto bulb to take it out. Somewhere should be an etch. Unless this one is totally gone. I don't see one anymore. I wrote 70 watt on it though, so I remember. It shows socket side, so you put the reflector in correctly. Although if you put it in the other way, you'll find out pretty quick. You see the socket again at an angle to help project the light down. Oh, there's the logo. All it says is Phillips. Because it's just gone. So we'll screw that back in. Here's where your photo cell would go, but there isn't one here. So what I'm going to do is take off these screws here so we can take a look at the ballast on the inside. Okay, so I had to take the reflector and the bulb out again. Well, I only took the bulb out. I shouldn't have put it back in because you had to take it out to get this piece off. You can see how they angled it for the socket. Very nice. It was a lot more dirty, dirtier than it is now. Although, of course, that's just from heat and such. Inside, we see a very nice old advanced ballast. This is one of the really old ones. We can also see the capacitor, and this is the starter, the igniter. As you can tell, it's a lot bigger than the ones they use today. It's pretty neat how they've changed them over time. But this is what the igniters used to be back on early high pressure sodium fixtures. They used to have the wires go through here, but they put these plates back on. Well, actually, they had them go through that little slot right there. These are the little screws that held the reflector on and in here is where all the electrical connections are for the ballast to the cord. So a pretty nice little tray to keep it all away. Of course there's none over here because there's no wires over there. We have a nice Sylvania GTE socket. I have a couple of these in my collection. Didn't really ever knew that uh, 
Sylvania made sockets until I found these fixtures and saw them inside of them. But just can't get over how nice this sticker is on this nice old advanced ballast. So anyway, enough looking at that. I'm going to put this thing back together and we'll have a look at it turning on. Okay, so I put the thing back together and now we're going to turn it on. Let me set the camera down so you can, I know you can't really see through this really yellowed refractor, but maybe you can see a little bit of it starting. Anyway, here we go. Three, two, one. Now you can't see it's just too bright outside. Anyway, it is turning on and uh, we'll come back when it's at full brightness. Yeah, you just can't see it's way too dim right now. But anyway, like I said, we'll come back when it's at full brightness. Okay, well, it's at full brightness now, and now you can actually tell that it's obviously on. One thing that I really like with high-pressure sodium bulbs and these yellowed-out refractors is that it gives it an even deeper orange color, more towards the color of a, a low-pressure sodium bulb, but of course not as not the same spectrum, of course, but pretty close to the same color as a low-pressure sodium bulb. So, look at a different angle here, you can see where it throws the light, throws it at these two different angles here. As you can see, these are the two angles it throws. Of course it throws a little bit out front, but they're mainly designed to throw at these two angles. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video of my Hubble 70 watt high pressure sodium wall pack. Also please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.